okay so question number 126 now they are saying about the acute mi they are talking about the acute mi over here has developed what edema of the lungs okay what condition uh, what condition this complication over here edema of the lungs is the complication of the left ventricular failure left sided heart failure we already talked about that so no no doubt about that so your answer will be left ventricular failure okay and right ventricular failure you can write over here in short that uh, right ventricular failure you actually uh, actually uh, identify them with the finding of for an example ascites for an example edema of the shin region okay so that is the finding of what right ventricular failure but left ventricular failure uh, yes definitely it will be the pulmonary edema okay moving further question number 127 question number 127 they are saying that uh, a woman who has been suffering from arterial hypertension okay so what they, uh, she is suffering from what arterial hypertension and for that is 15 so that is a chronic arterial hypertension so this one manifests dyspnea okay uh, dyspnea shortness of breath and palpitation her systolic pressure has decreased a little systolic pressure is decreasing what is the basic mechanism of the heart failure in this particular case okay so what is actually happening in this particular case <coughs> okay so <clears throat> in this one they are talking about the arterial hypertension and dyspnea was there palpitation uh, was there systolic pressure has decreased okay so systolic pressure has already been decreased in this one so i can say that uh, systolic pressure hypertension i told you systemic vascular resistance will be uh, disturbed over here hypertensive crisis uh, i told you one question where they were talking about the uh, 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 hypertensive crisis i told you about the problem of the afterload right and afterload i can say that as they are talking about what systemic vascular resistance or total peripheral resistance so that is a problem with what if they are talking about the cardiac overload will be happening due to uh, volume overload or resistance yes you are right that will be the resistance right so what will be the answer over here yes the answer will be clear cut that will be cardiac overload due to increased resistance cardiac overload due to increased blood outflow resistance right okay now let's move further now let's look at the question number 128 so i need to add one more image over here so let's add one more image over here and now let's move on to the question number 128 okay yes so that was about the question number 127 if you talk about question number 128 <coughs> so look at this one first degree av block they are mentioning about first degree av block with the elongation of the pq interval and that is actually going to 0.25 second i already mentioned about the pq interval normal range that is the 0.12 to 0.2 seconds right but over here pq interval is actually elongating first degree av block is this one i told you over there uh, the problem uh, i told you av blockage is actually the problem with the with what that is the conduction right so av nodal problem is with the conduction and uh, excitability problem is with what arrhythmia right so over here answer will be clear cut that the problem is in the conduction we already talked about uh, many problems for an example morgagni adam stokes or for an example uh, third degree av blocks <coughs> right so in the av blocks what is the problem the problem is in the conduction system pathway so answer is conduction over here and in short you can write with the excitation and i wrote it over there as well you can actually mention about arrhythmia over here in the arrhythmias right in the arrhythmias is a problem in the excitability of the tissues right now let's move on to the question number 129 so in the question number 129 what they are mentioning about they are mentioning about the rheumatism now if you talk about the rheumatism developed myocarditis we have already talked about one question where there was a damage of the myocardium and now with the uh, along with the myocarditis myocarditis there is a circulatory insufficiency which can uh, which i can say that is a cardiac insufficiency <coughs> what disturbance of hemodynamics is typical for this case yes that will be what decreasing of the <coughs> bb decreasing of what systolic arterial pressure okay <coughs> decreasing of what systolic arterial pressure why is it so because look your cardiac insufficiency is there your heart will not be able to uh, contract properly your left ventricle will not be able to contract properly so in that case systolic arterial pressure is gonna drop right so what will be the answer over here that will be the decrease of the systolic pressure 
right so answer will be decreasing of the systolic arterial pressure over here right now question number 130 <coughs> after one branch of the coronary artery of a dog has been tied up okay so during an experiment what they did is that uh, they actually tied one branch of coronary artery so they tied one branch of coronary artery and uh, of a dog over here has been tied a myocardial infarction with reabsorption resorption necrotic syndrome developed okay what are the characteristic symptom of this syndrome over here so what will be happening myocardial infarction actually happened and uh, you know uh, we know about some of the tests by which you can actually determine the patient is having the myocardial infarction or not that is the uh, enzyme test and one of uh, one of the enzyme you can check over here there that is the creatinine phosphokinase so over here what can be the answer that will be the creatinine phosphokinase that will be actually yes they will be what there will be the elevation of these levels and you can say ckmb levels okay you must know about this one ckmb level might be increasing right so let's move on to the next one now that is the 131 in the question number 131 they are mentioning about what they are mentioning about transmural okay they are mentioning about what they are mentioning about the transmural myocardial infarction so transmural means all the layers have been involved uh, for an example that is the pericardium myocardium and endocardium so transmural myocardial infarction is seen over here in this case and further i can say that there is an acute left ventricular failure okay acute left ventricular failure and what is the most typical sign of this condition so uh, we already knows about this one many times we have um, uh, we did this these kind of problems that acute left ventricular failure it can lead to pulmonary edema right so that is the edema of the lungs right side to right side heart failure or right ventricular failure that can lead to the SITs edema in the shins and uh, extremities regions right so yes so the answer over here will be clear cut that will be what that will be the pulmonary edema or edema of the lungs because of the backflow of the blood into the lungs right <coughs> okay question number 132 the question number 132 they are mentioning about what they are mentioning about the cirrhosis of the patient that is the alcoholic cirrhosis and due to the alcohol uh, there is uh, high chances of cirrhosis okay and treatment of cirrhosis is actually uh, the liver transplantation so cirrhosis of the liver is actually happening alcohol cirrhosis of the liver complaints of what general weakness dyspnea and look at the, look at this one now ascites is actually seen in the patient decrease arterial pressure and along with the dilatation of the superficial veins of the abdominal abdomen and the abdomen will be getting bigger and bigger and the splenomegaly is revealed over here because the backflow of the blood from the liver into the portal vein will be happening over here and due to that portal hypertension will be seen in the patient right so what is the problem over here which is happening over here that is the portal hypertension case that's why there is a backflow of the blood into the spleen there can be the backflow of the blood into the mesentery there can be the backflow of the blood into the uh, pancreas there can be the backflow of the blood into the stomach region so you know due to this backflow what is actually happening portal vein was carrying the blood from these organs right so this is a portal hypertension case so what can be the answer over here that can be the portal hypertension right that, that can be the case of syndrome of portal hypertension for the detail of this uh, for the detailed explanation of this question you can actually refer to the lever video in my channel okay and we have already talked about that in class as well right so now let's move on to the next one that is the question number 133 in the question number 133 they are mentioning about what they are mentioning about actually arterial hypertension again arterial hypertension and caused by what stenosis of the renal arteries okay and we know that whenever the uh, kidneys are not getting proper amount of blood supply they can actually cause in elevation in the blood pressure by active by the activation of one of the very important system that is the renin angiotensional testosterone system we are abbreviating that as a form of uh, RAS system right so activation they were asking you activation of what system uh, is the main mechanism of the pathogenesis yes you are right that is the activation of the RAS system and RAS system is what renin angiotensin aldosterone system yes so I am telling you about what I am telling you about the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so that is the RAS system in short I am writing over here uh, I am writing what I am writing RAS system okay so that will be RAS system over here that is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system right Moving further, now let's talk about the question number 134. In the question number 134, they are saying that arterial pressure of a patient with myocardial infarction. Okay, so yes, they are mentioning about what they are mentioning about myocardial infarction. Am I? And arterial pressure is actually decreasing. That is actually what arterial pressure is decreasing over here, 70 over 40. What is the initial mechanism of the development? So the initial mechanism of the development. So now we need to actually add one more image over here so let me add one more image
yes so what is the initial mechanism of the development of arterial hypertension in this case arterial hypotension sorry <coughs> so why the arterial hypotension happens <coughs> so that you need to look uh, that you need to look out over this one so that is a simple case <coughs> simple case of what that is simple case of uh, look cardiac output will be decreasing in this case right so, and we know that if the cardiac output will be decreasing what will be happening minute volume right i've already talked about that so if the cardiac output will be decreasing right they are talking about what they are talking about simply they are talking about the arterial hypertension reason so what will be cardiac output will be decreased or volume will be decreased heart rate will be decreased so what is that cardiac output what was the cardiac output blood pumped from the left ventricle into the aorta per minute right so that is what that is a decreasing of the cardiac output so our answer will be going towards what decreasing of the minute volume of the blood okay and what they want to say over here they want to say about the decreased cardiac output they want to say about the decreased cardiac output right okay moving further question number 135 rise of the intracranial pressure of a patient with cerebral hematoma caused excessive activity of the vagus nerve vagotonia and changes of the cardiac contraction frequency right so they are telling you about what they are telling you about the excessive activity of the vagus nerve and you know that excessive activity of vagus nerve can cause what bradycardia right so excessive uh, excessive activation of the vagus nerve excess activation of the parasympathetic nervous system so that will be leading to what that will be leading to obviously that will be leading to what sinus bradycardia that will be leading to what sinus bradycardia okay due to the activation of which system reactivation of parasympathetic system so parasympathetic uh, parasympathetic system will be activated over here parasympathetic system will be hyperactivated due to the vagal tone due to the hyperactive vagal tone or excessive activity of the vagal tone right vagus now question number 136 let's, now let's look over that in the question number 136 they are talking about the diminished rr interval they are talking about diminished rr interval Okay, so due to an infectious disease, a teenager developed arrhythmia and diminished RR interval is there during inspiration and is elongation during expiration. Same kind of question we already did where the answer was respiratory arrhythmia. Now let's look over this question. What would be the problem over here? Now they are talking about the <coughs> arrhythmias and about the arrhythmias. I told you there is a problem in the excitability of the tissues, right? There is a problem in the excitability of the tissues. So now let's look over this question. Okay. <clears throat> so over here uh, one more problem is there that <coughs> diminished RR interval is there and during inspiration and elongation during expiration so you know uh, just now we have talked about uh, one nerve that was a vagus nerve that was actually uh, talking about the parasympathetic nervous system okay so over here what can I say <coughs> I can say that uh, you know <coughs> Over here, I can say about the uh, look uh, if the vagus nerve will be fluctuating, sometime you will be having the bradycardia, sometime the patient may have the tachycardia because there's a disbalance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So that's why that can be the also that can also be the chance that where the diminished RR interval during inspiration and elongation during expiration might happen. So that can be the problem of the parasympathetic nervous system. That can be the problem of parasympathetic nervous system where the fluctuation of the vagus nerve can be seen right so again i will be writing over here that parasympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system will be actually getting disturbed over here so pns problem is there okay now let's move further <coughs> now question number one question number now let's move on to the next question that is question number 137 so in the question number 137 they are Okay, in the question number 137, they are actually saying about <coughs> acute failure of the mitral wall was experimentally reproduced in an animal. The heart actually adapted. The heart actually adapted to the pathological state by the activation of, okay, by the activation of heterometrical mechanism. Hydrometrical means what Frank Starling law. So what will be the answer over here? That is a clear clear cut case of this one that is a Frank Starling law. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर वन थर्टी एट रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ द कॉरोनरी ब्लड फ्लो ऑफ द पेशेंट सो वॉट देर सिंग रिस्टोरेशन रिस्टोरेशन आई टोल्ड यू वन क्वेश्चन वॉज देर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिपरफ्यूजन सो नाउ दिस इज द रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ द कॉरोनरी ब्लड फ्लो ऑफ अ पेशेंट विद माई कार्डियल इन्फॉक्शन वॉज एक्चुअली अकम्पनीड बाई डिमिनेशन ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रेक्टिव एबिलिटी ऑफ द हार्ट सो वॉट कैन बी द प्रॉब्लम ओवर हियर सो आई टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी देर कैन बी द फ्री रेडिकल पर ऑक्सीडेशन माइट गोइन हैपन एंड देर कैन बी द एक्सेस एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ द कैल्शियम आइंस राइट सो वॉट कैन बी द आंसर ओवर हियर वी ऑलरेडी टॉक्ट अबाउट दैट दैट इज द एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ द फ्री रेडिकल एंड फ्री रेडिकल पर ऑक्सीडेशन माइट हैपन फ्री रेडिकल फ्री रेडिकल पर ऑक्सीडेशन माइट हैपन ओके सो देवर सिंग वॉट इज द कॉज ऑफ कार्डियो मैसे डैमेज इन द रिपरफ्यूजन दैट इज द फ्री रेडिकल पर ऑक्सीडेशन राइट नाउ लेट्स मूव फर्दर Now let's talk about the question number one thirty nine. The question number one thirty nine. They are talking about the increased level of angiotensin two. Increased level of angiotensin two. I can say that increased level of what angiotensin two. Angiotensin two are actually causing the pressure effect, vasopressing effect on the blood vessels. Right. This is the important part of the RAS system, right? Angiotensin aldosterone system, and was revealed on the blood of a patient suffering from what hypertonic crisis. I already told you hypertonic crisis can be taken as hypertensive crisis due to the hyperactivation of the angi- uh, hy- uh, RAS system. And over here, you can say the increased level of angiotensin two. So, what is the pressure effect of the angiotensin? They are saying what is the pressure effect on the angiotensin associated with? Obviously, that will be causing the uh, systole, uh, not the systole, uh, actually the contraction of the muscles of the arterioles. I can say over here. So, rather, I should say the contraction of the arterioles, right? And that will lead to the increase in the systemic vascular resistance, right?